In this lesson, we'll discuss various ways we can approach animating with props. The scene is animating with props A start in your project files. So we have a number of ways we can go about by doing prop animation. Okay, we can, let's say, parent the object to, let's say, a hand, and then duplicate the object and animate between the visibility of that object and the object that is not parented to the character's hand. So that has its pros and cons. That's just a quick way to get the task done, but when you are working with larger objects, that may not be too, too uh, practical of a solution. But if you're working with, let's say, a, a character throwing a ball, maybe that would be a good idea. And we do have a course animating uh, the visibility of objects that you can take a look at if you're interested in that method. But what we're going to do is focus primarily on animating between constraints. Now, constraints, they offer us just a, a great way of, of animating between uh, between different spaces that the object will need to be controlled in. For instance, let's take this cup. Now, ideally what we'd want is for this hand to pick up the cup and and by the end of it we'd want to have this cup placed in this this little bowl here. Now to do this, again, animating the visibility may not be a good idea because it could get cumbersome. We'd have to switch back and forth between the parented object and the duplicated object and make sure that our visibility keys are just right. And on top of that, have to worry about our transform keys as well. So instead, we can get rid of a, a lot of that work by just simply working with constraints. Now, the only downside or limitation with constraints, just working with them by default, is that we have to animate it in a way where it's a seamless blend. As we switch from one space to another, let's say taking this character's hand and then constraining the cup to the hand, then as that moves somewhere else, well, the cup was originally strained at this location, so what would happen is when we switch back, that cup would, would snap back to this location. So we would just have to then reanimate the cup into its new location once that weight has been turned off so it looks like a seamless blend. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and get started with this. So we have this character. He's reaching for this cup, and, he, and by the end of this, he'll place the cup in this bowl. So we'll We'll actually be working with a number of constraints. Now, being that we're going to animate on top of constraints, one thing we want to check for in our preferences, let's go ahead and head over there, is underneath the animation category, we have animation blending. This is for constraints. We want to make sure that always blend with existing connections is turned on so we can animate on top of our constraints. All right, so once we've checked for that, we can go ahead and save this out and we can get to it. So, being that this this arm is going to rotate and also move the cup, we'll want to use a parent constraint. But if you were just, let's say, moving the cup and didn't have to worry about rotation, let's say if this cup was going to, going to land on, let's say, a conveyor, a conveyor belt for a shot, just kind of slide through the scene, maybe you'd want to use a point constraint. But in our case, we want to use a parent constraint so we could lock down both position and rotation. So what I'll do is go to about the point where we want the cup to be controlled. That's going to be around frame 12. I'll select the arm control, shift select the cup, and then we can go ahead and apply a parent constraint. I'll go to the options, and we'll make sure maintain offset is turned on, which it should be by default, so nothing shifts on us. All right, so I'll go ahead and choose add, and now notice the cup. It's going to be constrained to the hand, but here's the problem. It's always going to be constrained. Again, we want that, that constraint to happen only after frame 10. Now, this brings up another very important point. Make sure that you have your, your object in the position you want it to be in before it's controlled by, in this case, the hand control. Okay, this is so that that transform data will be updated in the constraint. So you can see the offset here. All right, and with that said, you wouldn't want to then, let's say, have the cup over here and then do your parent constraint because then you'd have to move the cup back over and and it'd be a lot of tedious work trying to get things lined up. All right, so we have the cup constrained. Let's say we go ahead and 
work on animating this constraint now. Now you can see that when we go ahead and set a key on this cup, let's head over to frame 10 and we'll press Shift W and Shift E to lock down some translate and rotate keys. You'll see now our connections have changed from blue to green, letting us know that we have now set keys on top of our constraint. What we should also see is a blend parent attribute. This is going to allow us to blend smoothly between this cup being controlled by the hand and being controlled by the world or having no parent. So this is uh, a great attribute and we're going to do some cool things with it as we progress through the training. All right, but for now, we have that weight set to zero. So what we'd want to do is go ahead and head over to frame 10 and set a key of zero. And now we can go to frame 12 and go ahead and set a weight of one or 100%. Right click, key selected. So now, before frame 10, there's no control over the cup. But we get by the time we get to frame 12, now we have the cup blending to be controlled by the hand. All right, great. Now from here, the cup is going to land in the bucket. All right, so on frame 28, that's where the, the hand's going to drop the cup. I'll go to frame 27, set a key of 1. On 28, I'll go ahead and set a key of 0 on the blend parent. Now notice what happens, that cup is going to pop back to its original position where the constraint was applied. So at this point, what we'd want to do is, with the cup selected, just go in and kind of align it, align it in place. So that's where things get a little bit trickier. Now a quick trick, I'll go ahead and show you that, I'll delete the key on 28. A quick trick is to go to that frame where you'd like the cup to to just uh, have no more control or have no more control by the arm control, let's say. And I'll go ahead and duplicate the cup from there, control D. All right. So now we have that as a reference point. Then from there, you can go back to the animated cup, go to frame 28, and set that key of zero on the blend parent. Okay, notice that cup is going to pop back, but now what we could do is simply take the the animated cup and kind of align it back to the duplicated cup. And this will help us to make sure that this switch is, is seamless. Now there are other ways of actually doing this where the process is seamless, but it's a little bit more complicated of a setup. All right, but for right now, this will definitely do. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and take the duplicated cup and delete it. I also have auto key turned on so we could speed up that the keying process. But now notice, it looks like a seamless blend. Great. So I'll hit play so we can check this out. And there we have it. All right, so we have successfully animated this cup traveling from the hand to this bowl. Now what about the bowl? Are we allowed to constrain multiple objects? Well, we sure can. So again, we want to go to the point where we want the cup to be in position so that it can be controlled by the, the bowl. From there, I'll go to the environment layer, unreference it, select the bowl, shift select the cup, Let's do this on frame 28. We'll go ahead and set another parent constraint. So now we have two weights to work with here. All right, so what that means is that we're going to have this blend occur between the hand control and the bowl. So to take care of this, we need to animate these two weights. So on 28, I'll go ahead and set a key on the arm control's weight with it set to 1, and for the bowl, I'll have that set to 0. Now as we get to 29, we can go ahead and switch this around. So the arm control is going to be set to 0, the bowl is going to be set to 1. And now notice this. So we scrub through, hand lets go, 
and now the cup which should be fully controlled by the the bowl let's let me go ahead and check that one more time ah one thing we also need to of course do is make sure that our blend parent is going to be set to one because right now it's set to zero meaning that no constraint will affect this cup so on 28 I'll just go there set a zero key for the blend parent go to 29 and put in value of one now we'll see that bowl control the cup alright so we have several things to to work with here when we're animating with constraints but again it's an ideal process now when we do animate on top of let's say our keyframe channels we have this pair blend node that is is created okay, this is where we get this blend parent attribute from to kind of regulate that node but that node controls the the animation data and the constraint data so I'm going to show you that simply go to the object that's constrained head over to rendering editors hypershade give it a second you can also load this node up in the hyper graph but I like working with the hypershade I think it's a, a bit more intuitive when working with nodes. All right, so from here, we can now go to show input output connections. Go ahead and zoom in here, and here is our pair blend node. All right, so we have a, a number of different attributes we can actually edit to get the effects that we want. But again, all of that animation and and constraint data is regulated by this node and then we can control its weight so we see here the weight attribute by the pair blend the, or the parent blend attribute that is created once we add a constraint on top of an object that has been keyframed alright so this is a quick look at animating on top of constraints and working with constraints and we are going to get a little bit more in depth into animating objects but again if you're working with some a uh, smaller object may even consider animating the visibility back and forth but uh, keep in mind that it may get a bit cumbersome if you're going to be doing that quite often in your scene so in this case a constraint might be better to use but even with that you have other attributes that you have to be worried about and there are ways of creating custom attributes, which we'll get into to regulate this so that it's a bit more animator friendly to control. All right. Uh, with that said, in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at something that's a little bit more cleaner than animating on top of a constrained object.